Hello everyone, welcome once again to 40k Amateur Hour and the newest episode of Chad's Corner. What we're going to do this time is take this piece of styrofoam packaging material. Styrofoam packaging material, you probably couldn't hear me, my face was behind it. Styrofoam packaging material and turn it into an adobe building for Wild West Exodus. That's kind of the, the game du jour right now, so stay tuned. And we're going to turn this into a usable piece of terrain. All right, first step is to get a shish kebab skewer like this. Bamboo, ske bamboo skewer, a couple of them. And using wire cutters, cut them into little bitty bits like this. Next, 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 next. Take your little bitty bits and stick them into the top of the styrofoam like that. Those are going to rep represent the long poles that go through an adobe building to hold the roof up. Also take a moment to cut out any doors and or windows you may want in your adobe building. So now I've added sticks to the inside of the windows because Buildings like this, if you had unsupported stuff, it would just collapse over the top. Hi everyone! There's Rico. So yeah, when you have a building made out of mud bricks, you've got to support spans like this so they'd have wood bridging the gap to keep the bricks from falling in. Blocks from in? Clay, clay bricks? Clay Adobe. blocks? Adobe, yeah. Adobe. Mud and straw mixed up, anyway. And on the front here we've put the start of a big rolling sliding door. And here we are. We've got the door all set. Looks like a nice rolling door that would just slide over and cover the entrance. The logs have all been glued in. Those represent, if I can zoom out here, those represent the long pieces of wood that would run through the ceiling to support it. The window's ready to go. And now I'm going to do a little messy work. We're going to take regular old fashioned no frills Elmer's glue and large, well large of a paintbrush, not a very large brush, but and we're going to coat this with the glue. Concept here is A, Elmer's glue will add some durability to the foam. B, it'll cover up this grainy texture that makes it look like it's foam. C, It'll leave some brush strokes and streaks in it to make it look more like the uh, plaster-like appearance of the mud that gets smeared over the top of adobe bricks on adobe buildings. So, time to just slather the glue on there, brush it around. almost feel like I'd just take the nozzle off and go to town with it, but yeah. right-handed man with his right hand on the camera trying to switch to the left all right so this is what I'm going to do I am going to cover the entire model like this and make sure your brush strokes are kind of random that way it doesn't look like brush strokes all right and I'm gonna go little by little piece by piece over the entire building doing that let it dry and come back again in a minute. All right, so there we go. We've got the entire roof done at this point. Don't know if you can see it that well on the camera. It's nice to have a shiny light coming down on this from above so you can see what's glossy and what's not to make sure you get the whole thing covered. Otherwise, you might not know until you paint it. And speaking of paint, that's another reason it's good to put this on. Uh, as many of you know, the propellant in some aerosol paints can attack styrofoam and cause it to just shrivel up and melt. So, 
This can also help with that if you plan on spray painting it later. And even more glue. Being sure to get inside the window. So there it is, it's done. It's covered in glue. And now we're gonna take it over Rico to cover the painting portion. Hey, 40K Amateur Hour people here watching Chad's Corner. Hey, it's a little strange day today for Chad's Corner is invading a little bit of the space of, you know, the crazy terrain spot. So Chad's been working on a Adobe house for Wild West Exodus or whatever you may want to be. In fact, you know, thinking about it, I want to. I think we should change our name from 40K Amateur Hour to Gamers Amateur Hour because, oddly enough, 40K is probably one of the. We don't play it as much because, well, that's another Rico's rant that will come from another time. But uh, Chad's handed over part of the project to help me get the, his Adobe House painted. So we're going to go through some of the things that we're going to do to paint it and get it set up. So it'll be all ready to be using as some awesome terrain that we'll be using in several games as we are making a desert board for 40k, for Age of Sigmar, for Wild West Exodus, whatever, we decided to kill each other on in a whoa, in a desert terrain area. So, uh, moving right along, we're going to start doing that right now. Alright, so to get some texture, we are going to use, now remember we're cheap, so I know you can get like textured paint and things like that, but we're cheap here, and so we make cheap terrain. So this is some basic playground sand, it's what we're using to base the uh, desert board that we have. And so we're going to put this together so that it kind of matches a little bit here. So we are going to use this as some texture to put into the paint to uh, paint this adobe adobe house with a little bit of texture in it. So we are going to use your basic, as I said, we're cheap. So for this project, we're using some basic Walmart paints here. And so just get the colors that you feel that you need for some desert effect. And we're going to mix them in a dice container because why because we're cheap and we're gonna mix it in there and then begin applying it to the Adobe house that Chad has base coated with some awesome let's turn the light on here it's a little cubby here in the dungeon so we can get that started and then we're gonna spend some time painting this wood to look like wood Chad and I think it's interesting how much time we spend painting wood to look like wood, but hey, that's what we do. If you have rocks, you paint them to look like rocks. If you have wood, you paint them to look like wood. So we are going to put our uh, mixture in here. We're just going to put some sand and some paint, and then we will start applying, and we'll go a little bit from there and show you how that comes about. All right, so that's how much sand I'm putting in there. Not a whole ton, not a whole lot. And then we're going to bring in our paint mix to kind of just go along in there. We're going to add some uh, colors that we feel good about here. This is a khaki color that we're doing and then we're going to put in a beige of some sort that, uh, well maybe we are. There we go. And we're going to mix that up and then we're going to start applying the paint to the Adobe House. All right, too bad I don't have more than one hand. Well, actually I do have more than one hand, but more than two hands to be able to show everything that's gonna happen here, but we're gonna get moving and then I'll show you as we go. So starting our mix now and we'll get moving from there. All right, so we are going to start putting, putting, that's funny. Uh, we're gonna start putting this textured paint that we have mixed together here and we are applying it to the awesome cutout that Chad has done here and we will be kind of liberally applying it. It's kind of hard to do while filming and uh, then we're gonna let that dry, do some highlighting and some different color texture on it and that to make it kind of make match up and look a little bit better as we go through and then we're gonna actually do the wood and things of that sort. So as you can see it's just going on like it is and then I'll show you more when we get done. Okay so we've got the sides pretty much done and we're gonna be doing the top and one thing I forgot to mention is when you're doing this if you have a brush that you just absolutely love and it's just become your you know your favorite brush of all time I would not recommend using 
your favorite brush for this because in the end the brush doesn't usually come out real well so once again we say we're cheap so this brush is actually just one of those ones you get for watercolors for the kids watercolor things not the plastic bristled ones that are really really cheap but still it's a cheap one that doesn't cost you an arm and a leg and when it's dead it doesn't break your heart so don't use a brush that you're really fond with you've named and it's become your buddy because it probably will not come out the same after such abuse of the sand and the paint with this so getting the top done and we'll let it dry and we'll get back to you okay whoo so now we are just I'm adding some different colors dry brushing along it and we're going to just keep doing that with some different colors lighter colors to kind of just highlight some areas and bring out some different colors in it and so we are going to go over that that kind of looks like a little hole or something in the adobe so I'm going to kind of highlight that a little bit to make it stand out a bit to look like it's chipped away uh, and we'll just keep doing some dry brushing just with some different colors I'm still using the crappy brush well the nice wonderful brush I had that is now the crappy brush um, from before that I did all the texturing with to do the dry brush and we'll just keep adding a couple different ones I'm doing just some lighter lighter colors to cover up some of those areas that the paint didn't stick to as well you can kind of see that so we're going to cover those up with some dry brush and go from there okay dry brush and done I added some dark around the base for it to have to match in the dirt and that's going to be around it on the on the board that it's you know the wind is kind of blown up and had its toll on it a little bit too wearing it down and it has the different shades and colors along the top now we're going to get to the wood so we're going to start doing the pole supports and Chad's awesome barn like door which he made big enough so that a motorcycle could fit through it that was his main goal so we will then at start attempting to do the wood and we're going to do a base coat of a darker brown and then do some dry brushing around it and to give it the weathered look. Okay, door is done with the weathering, dry brushing going on there. Added along the uh, pole sticking out a little bit of weathering effect. Just kind of gives it a, a little bit of an older kind of look. Breaks up the monotony of the stucco stuff and have just kind of a cool effect I think so there you go Chad's Adobe house for our desert scenery is pretty much done so that is Chad's corner slash Rico's crazy terrain intermixing here with some awesome terrain. I'm going to show you just some highlights of a couple other things before we're done. So hang on for just a few more minutes. Okay, so as we're talking doing some Wild West Exodus, I didn't really go into detail on how to build these because it's not really that tough. But we've just been having fun building some old time, kind of old looking uh, western. We'll probably show you some of the boards and stuff. Basically, it's foam core, and then we just took some. Uh, popsicle sticks and just like uh, the old days when you were in the kindergarten you made little bird houses or whatever we just had a good time roughed them up we kind of wanted we didn't want them to look pretty we wanted them to look old and just be there for blocking terrain and be able to stand up there and shoot the enemy from a distance and so we have several buildings that we've been working on that's just been kind of fun and uh, doing some good little terrain things this is a this is a good centerpiece. The uh, gals here I got some help uh, from a friend named Russ that uh, did this work in here on some cool stuff. And uh, anyway, we just wanted to show you not real hard to do. It was really easy, really simple, and cheap to get some of these buildings done. We have here we go pan through. Sorry, dirty dungeon. I need to clean. We have quite a few other buildings that we've been working on that we we have to be using in there so we're going to be doing some wild west exodus and some desert terrain stuff of course everybody needs to have an awesome uh, brothel if you've got uh, you know a cowboy town and the hotel and 
just everything kind of that we've been doing and just having a good time having a fun with it uh, sheriff's office we did put some actual shrink some uh, actual wanted posters put them up on the sheriff's office and just been having a good time with everything we made some graves uh, very simple the round end of the popsicle stick he just uses the tombstone and then some rocks some dry brushing some fun that we did through there uh, just a couple of things to make a graveyard so we have a boot hill quite a few things and actually another fun one is got a wagon at the dollar store and the cowboy and Indian pack there that I guess cowboy and Native American pack there just dry brushed it up, changed up, did some paint on it, weathered it a little bit. Good blocking terrain. So anyway, you'll be seeing some of this out on the board. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Like, subscribe, all that other fun stuff. Chad's Corner, Rico's Terrain, signing out.